Good morning, guys. We're going on another road trip, but this time I'm not going alone. I'm going with my family. We're going on a Canada road trip. We're going to be going for about two weeks. Let's get it going. Oh, my mom just showed up now. <laughs> All right, you know it's not a road trip unless the first stop on your road trip is Tim Hortons. I love Tim Hortons. How'd it taste? Hey, the best, eh? <laughs> Tim Hortons. <laughs> One of the key players before now owns a coffee shop, Tim Hortons. Never gonna get sponsored by Tim Hortons. <laughs> All right, let's go. So, uh, didn't get to mention what the whole plan is. So we're actually headed towards uh, cross country. Like I mentioned in some of my previous videos, we're doing a cross country uh, road trip all the way down to Toronto, but we might be, we are actually visiting uh, old Montreal as well too on one of our trips and then heading back. So it's about a almost a hundred plus hours of driving across Canada. So we're going to Toronto, Montreal, and all the way back. This is actually gonna be one of my first series that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, this, there's gonna be episodes coming out every week. So I hope you guys are looking forward to uh, joining me and my family when we head out to uh, places that we've actually never been to. I've never visited any of the other provinces uh, of Canada other than maybe Alberta. Uh, never been to Manitoba, Saskatchewan, um, any of Ontario, like any of the other provinces. So this is a perfect time for us to go. Uh, and you know, everything's kind of getting lifted right now too with all, all the COVID things, so. All right, just taking a quick washroom break. Coffee is coming out. And also this guy needs to go pee pee. Also brought the dogs with us. Me and Julian actually just saw this uh, little board here, Trails of Hope. Kind of interesting of going, checking out this place. And I actually had never been to Othello, so I might do that during the summer uh, when I'm not out, uh, you know, exploring other places. And also, I didn't know there was a camel here. So, as you guys can see right here, I think I passed by this on my last uh, trip up here to Edmonton, and but yeah more construction here trying to get rid of all the um, damage that was caused during the flooding um, yeah uh, just back on to Coquihalla today right blue skies outside uh, perfect day compared to yesterday when it was raining really hard anyways uh, we're gonna keep on driving um, and my dog is breathing hard <laughs> Taking another quick break. Uh, this is what happens when you drink too, way too much coffee. Uh, just back into actually Britain rest stop. If you guys watched my last video when I went to Edmonton, I did this stop as well too. So yeah, um, taking a quick stop here. And I think we're gonna be getting the two boys to drink some of their water. So just, yeah, they're, they're panting a little bit. Uh, but all in all, it's been a great, perfect day to drive uh, this trip. I was kind of getting worried, like I said earlier, just because it was raining pretty hard yesterday. I actually didn't get to read this, but this, these are like routes for certain things that you can actually uh, go discover. Um, some are for hot springs, uh, you know, to visit great north, northern parts of BC. I'd actually like to do this one one day. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. Anyways. Back on the road we go. So here is actually another bridge over here that got destroyed during the uh, flooding um, last year. Here's uh, that bridge that got uh, broken down. That's why right now we're only doing uh, one way on each, each lane here. Um, but yeah, I think they're trying to repair it. Hopefully it gets repaired um, soon, because uh, 
Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, travels that are gonna be happening uh, throughout the summer, but uh, I think it'll take time. One good thing about this summer so far is that it's a lot cooler. Um, if you guys see on the left here, uh, there's actually, uh, there was actually some forest fires as well too that happened a while back. I think some last year that caused all the, uh, the trees to get burned down here. Uh, but I'm glad that it's a little bit cooler summer, even though uh, I'm hoping uh, it'll be a lot sunnier. Right, Eggsy? Yep, I think he agrees. We just passed, I believe we're almost in Merritt. Uh, it's crazy. All of a sudden, clear blue skies, sun is shining down really, really brightly. And uh, can't complain about the scenery that we're seeing right now. I believe we're only about another hour or so until we reach Kamloops to have lunch and then and gas up, and then on the way to uh, Lake Louise we go, uh, and then afterwards uh, we're gonna be camping for two nights over at Banff. So uh, this first episode is basically us driving to Banff for two days. And then uh, we'll continue on on the next episode uh, of us going to uh, another part of Canada, which I'll mention towards the end of the video. Honestly, can never get tired of driving up towards Merritt because just because the weather once you pass the mountains is just beautiful, and the scenery and everything else while you're driving is just awe-inspiring. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's keep on going. Just got to Costco in. Kamloops taking a quick break here uh, gonna have our lunch <laughs> cheapest way to actually go buy food is just uh, getting gas over at Costco which is uh, actually uh, cheaper already and then getting some food at Costco so just waiting for my mom and my sister to go buy food and we're gonna go and have our lunch anyways gonna walk around with the dogs for a little bit get their legs all stretched out <laughs> <laughs> you love the sun, Eggsy. Just finished eating at Costco on our way to Banff. So let's go. watched uh, an episode from a local youtuber named uh, Downey Live and he actually visited that area that area is actually has a whole bunch of train uh, collection from like I don't know miniature ones to actual full uh, blown uh, locomotives and stuff like that so uh, yeah it's pretty cool I actually just passed by it's a pretty big place uh, can't miss it once you pass uh, you're passing through Revelstoke and uh, yeah the, the red red chateau I believe is what it's called but um, yeah be a nice place to check out maybe when we come when we head back uh, back from our uh, trip to the east uh, when we're heading home maybe something we can check out we're just actually two and a half hours away from Lake Louise and uh, we're actually doing pretty good when it comes into time. Uh, drizzling a little bit right now, but all in all, um, hoping that it's uh, not too bad once we get to them. to the city of Golden, stopping at another Tim Hortons, uh, just having a break uh, with my boys. We're only an hour away from Lake Louise, and me and my dad are gonna switch because I'd like to film some of Yoho um, Provincial Park. Uh, there's some nice sights there. And then of course, I'm gonna be filming uh, Lake Louise as well too, so uh, should be good. Uh, 
a straight on bridge and I think I've seen some on video on YouTube of course that uh, a lot of people mentioned that this is one of the most dangerous part of the Highway 1. Finally arrived at Lake Louise. Lake Louise is located in Banff National Park in the Canadian Rockies. It's world famous for its turquoise glacier lake jaw-dropping mountain backdrop, abundance of hiking trails, and incredible ski resort. It was the beginning of June when we visited Lake Louise, and surprisingly, parts of the lake was still frozen. This trip was the first time visiting Lake Louise, and it didn't disappoint. The only thing I didn't like was since it's a tourist destination, there were tons of them during our visit. So if you plan on visiting Lake Louise, make sure to arrive early, or you can always stay at the Fairmount Chateau, which overlooks the lake. But rumor has it, the hotel is haunted, which may or may not add to your adventure. Just finished visiting Lake Louise. Uh, as you can hear, the doggos are breathing really hard right now. We did take uh, a little walk there and the sun came out, which is awesome. Uh, just a little note, we got here at about six o'clock when there's a rush hour of a lot of people. So if you'd like to go uh, to Lake Louise where there's not a lot of people, I'd say probably head there really early in the morning. Uh, I'm sure it's already open by that time and there'll be less people. Uh, once we got there, there was uh, tons of people uh, at that in the area. So it was hard to actually kind of film and take pictures, but it's all good. I mean, that's the first time I've ever been to Lake Louise. So unfortunately, uh, Marine Lake is, I heard, closed uh, for some reason. I'm not too sure. I'll probably figure it out, but uh, they're closed. So that's probably going to be out of the itinerary in regards to visiting that area. <laughs> Anyways, the boys are breathing hard. Uh, gonna try to start heading to our campsite over at Banff uh, on one of their campgrounds yeah on our way to go it's about another 45 minutes just to get there I'll see you guys in a bit yeah. Just got to our campsite and I think I picked the right spot. We're right by the washroom and we're just about to set up. So let's get to it. We arrived at the Banff Village One campground. This campground is located 10 minutes away from the town of Banff, which is pretty convenient. We reserved the campsite with an on-site fire pit, which at that time was permitted. As you know, I don't normally go to paid campsites, but I think if you are to visit Banff, this is the way to go immersing yourself to the outdoors while enjoying the luxuries of clean washrooms and hot shower. Got the fire started, all set up now. Got the food ready. Um, my sister and my mom is gonna be sleeping inside. And then I me and my dad are gonna be sleeping in the tent. Oh, time for dinner. Hey guys, just finished dinner and we're just taking the dogs for a walk. Uh, yeah, trying to burn off a bit of this uh, all the food that we ate today, but yeah, we're just taking them for a walk. No, that's the, that's where the wood is. 
Yeah. Eating it back. Oh, let's go walk to the way. Yeah. Let's grab a few. Yeah. Just gonna pick up some more wood just to end the day. Uh, we only have about until 11 o'clock anyways uh, to have fire and everything else. So just gonna have a little bit more wood. After returning back to camp, we hung out by the fire until it started raining. So we called it an early night. Good morning guys, day two, currently eating breakfast. Uh, had a good sleep. Unfortunately, my parents and my sister didn't because of somebody we're not gonna name. But anyways, uh, we're deciding to give my uncle in Calgary a call so we can just stay one night and then start heading to Manitoba on uh, Monday, which is tomorrow. And yeah, that's the plan so far. We're gonna go check out Banff today, the town of Banff today, and then yeah, start heading to Calgary right after. So this is the hoodoos. Uh, I guess the mountain, right, Jill? Over a thousand of years, rain, snow melt, and wind have scoured the glacial material that makes up the ridge you're standing on, creating deep and narrow gullies. These hoodoos were once partially protected from erosion by caps of sod or harder rock material. So I'm assuming this is their uh, like main like area, hey? Jill, you want poutine? Oh, or do you want authentic wanna... Montreal? <laughs> or do you want to wait when we get to Montreal? So just walking down to Banff downtown, uh, checking out the places here. Really, probably think of going back here in the future. And uh, I think personally, uh, and I'm from BC, but I think this is honestly a lot better than was the village. There's a lot more room and space, so yeah. Just finished uh, checking out uh, Banff downtown. On our way to Calgary right now. Actually on the way out, we saw a bear. I didn't get to film it. Uh, it's a baby cub um, playing around a little bit and uh, was just there for a little bit and left. Um, yeah, we're on our way to Calgary uh, just to stay for uh, the night at my uncle's place uh, just because of the weather situation. We're doing something very Filipino, so uh, and it's a tradition. Where are we going, Dad? Jollibee! Jollibee! <laughs> yeah, Best food in town! I don't know about that, but <laughs> we are going to go to uh, a Filipino restaurant, uh, well, fast food restaurant uh, that's known in the Philippines and some in America as well too so we're actually headed there right now uh, we have one in Vancouver but uh, there's only one place down in downtown and uh, typically the lineups are pretty long so hopefully here it's not too bad oh we made it to Jolly B. you already know what's up your destination is on the right Jollibee is a Filipino fast food restaurant chain that opened its doors in 1978 it's basically the McDonald's of Philippines, but with different varieties of food such as spaghetti, palabok, pancit, and much more Filipino dishes. Just heads up, we'll be hitting a few Jollibees on this trip. After our lunch at Jollibee, we head on out to my uncle's place. already uh, left Calgary about 15 minutes ago currently on highway 1 on our way to Regina Saskatchewan and uh, yeah it's gonna be a good seven hour drive probably gonna take a stop over at Medicine Hat to get some gas and probably stretch our legs uh, might grab some coffee actually uh, just to start the day so um, might stop by on a few spot stops along the way to go check out time to head on to uh, Regina let's go driving through uh, Medicine Hat 
feels like I'm back in 1997 living in Vancouver because all the houses here and everything else feels just like uh, it feels like back in the day so um, yeah uh, currently actually raining so we're I'm really hoping that it's a little bit better once we uh, cross to Saskatchewan but yeah all we saw were flatlands throughout the whole thing and uh, yeah nothing really to report because it's just flatlands Dad, how do you like your view in uh, Saskatchewan? It's all plain, you can see uh, the other side of the mountain <laughs> What mountain? <laughs> Mount, mountain of grass <laughs> Yeah, we're just gonna keep on driving I think we're gonna take a quick pit stop um, you know, to stretch the legs a little bit and then uh, we're gonna continue on. We should be arriving at Regina at around 3 p.m. and then we're gonna go check in and uh, probably gonna you know, check out the city a little bit. So, just passed through Swift Current and honestly, uh, such a change of uh, landscape coming from Alberta, uh, Alberta side of the prairies, I guess, uh, just because in the Alberta side, it's all like pretty much flatlands, and then here, it's a, there's a lot more uh, hills uh, compared to the one in Alberta. So at least it's a change of scenery, and also the sun is out, which is awesome. Uh, it's something to look forward to as we carry on this trip. Uh, we're about an hour away from Moose Jaw, and about an hour, almost less than two hours away from. Uh, Regina and yeah, I'm gonna continue on You don't know sir. All right, so just passing through here in Saskatchewan uh, Between uh, close to Moose Jaw My whole family were just wondering what the heck this is Like is it just snow or I'm, I'm not too sure it looks like it's snow, but it looks like it's powder as well, too. Um, I'm probably gonna go search what it is, but if anybody knows, you know, comment down below uh, and let us know. We're getting closer. Just uh, 45 minutes away. And this guy's still sleeping. That guy too. Once we arrived at Moose Jaw, we decided to take a quick break and visit a local celebrity. While in Moose Jaw, gotta go visit Mac the Moose, the largest, I guess, moose statue in the world, supposedly, but who knows? I'm pretty sure we're the only one in the world that would have a moose statue. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, uh, little stop uh, just to stretch out a little bit, um, which is actually pretty cool because there's actually like some gophers uh, living around here making that noises. So, see if you guys look here. I think they're making noises right now, but if you guys see here, there's gopher holes in and around the area. You guys just leaving Moose Jaw right now on our way to Regina. Uh, got to visit uh, Mac the Moose. And yeah, uh, we should be there in about 40 minutes. And then we're gonna check in, uh, do the thing, fresh it up, and then probably head out to uh, the city. All right guys, just got to Regina. <laughs> it's so weird to say. We just got to Regina. Uh, got to our hotel just gonna uh, basically put our stuff inside our hotel and then freshen up and start heading out to the city all right we're about to go to uh, the city of Regina everybody's here my dad's here yeah just left the boys so uh, we'll be quick about three hours or so and then uh, I think Jillian you kind of checked out a few places right a couple of other places are closed oh, it's all good no worries anyways time to go Downtown. Uh, Regina's downtown. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty dead. I think everybody just comes in and work. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna walk around, check out some stuff. And uh, yeah, not too sure we're, we're trying to find a place to go eat and uh, have our late lunch. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad, but I mean, it's pretty dead. We're not used to it. Cause you go to like downtown in Vancouver, it's, it's 
pretty lively, so. All right, just get to this park right in downtown. Uh, kind of feels like Vancouver, kind of feels like home in a way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just checking it out. Uh, gotta check out the parliament building as well too. We're on our way to a few spots, but we're probably just gonna drive by, take some videos, take some pictures, and that's pretty much it. Uh, still gotta go to Winnipeg tomorrow morning, early tomorrow morning. All right, first stop. I wish we had time for this one, but we unfortunately got here a little bit late. Uh, this is the Saskatchewan Museum, Royal Saskatchewan Museum. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I love history. I love like architecture, history and stuff like that. So would have been nice to just check their version out and uh, you know, take a, take a quick peek of it. But this is the best we can do right now, just outdoors. At least I can say I've been here. It's a pretty nice spot actually. Right off, close to like all the residential areas, everything else here. Um, but yeah. All right, that will do it for the museum. Time to go to the legislative uh, building of Saskatchewan. I know you're Canadian when you let all these loons pass you <laughs> to get to the to the water. Yeah. Last stop is just the Science Center. Again, uh, probably one of the places I probably would have went and come visit. Wescana Park, or this area here called Wescana, is really nice. I wish we had more time to go check it out, but this is it. Saskatchewan Science Center, uh, 30 years. They closed down. They closed early though, like, I think they closed at like 6.30. I mean, all of the same locations are like really close to each other. Um, the parliament's just down there, or the legislative building's just down there. Here's the science, uh, science center, and just down the, the road, that's where they had the museum as well too, so it's pretty cool. Just one section, I wish we had more time to go check it out. Maybe we'll have better chance when we go to Winnipeg, uh, since it's only a six hour drive. We are leaving a little bit earlier than we did today. I mean, the shorter drive, but we did leave pretty early as well too, so. Anyways, uh, time to head back to the hotel. Not sure if I'm going to be filming after, but if I do, <laughs> it's probably uh, probably just going to be something short. But anyways, time to head there right now. Just at the laundry room at the hotel, family decided not to do anything else after uh, that little field trip that we did to those three spots that I showed you guys. We're just going to end day three today and get ready for day four. On the way to Winnipeg, Manitoba. Decided to do some work while I do the laundry. Anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. We are currently already on the road towards uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, just a short drive, actually shorter than a lot of the drives that we've taken already uh, between provinces. Uh, this will only take us about five and a half hours to get there. Um, wish, like I said yesterday, wish we had more time to uh, check out Regina, but uh, gotta keep moving. Gotta get to uh, Ontario by Thursday uh, and all, all the way to Toronto by Friday. So uh, yeah, uh, kind of on a schedule. So uh, trying to just follow it and get, get there. Just uh, past the Manitoba border, uh, another three hours or so until we get to Winnipeg. Um, yeah, forecast is correct. It is currently 20 degrees outside. Beautiful blue skies and the sun is shining pretty hard. All in all, uh, good drive so far. I uh, can't wait to get to Winnipeg. We arrived at Winnipeg around lunchtime, and as I said, in the beginning of this trip, we'll be visiting a few Jollibee fast food restaurants along the way. 
just like last time i ordered a chicken and spaghetti combo with that refreshing pineapple juice because i'm an island boy <laughs> so we already checked in our hotel here in winnipeg and uh you know kind of rested a little bit um you know relaxed a little bit after that long drive and then are on our way to uh forks market heard that this is like one of their spots to visit and also there are other places there as well too that um are nearby that we can check out as well we have the dogs with us so it's perfect it's right by the water so yeah i thought that would be a better option than other places around here yeah. first one stop we're going to the forks market uh just down here and uh of course they still have the train stuff here yeah. but yeah this is forks market let's go check it out the Forks Market is a historical site located in downtown Winnipeg, right by the Red River and Asinoban River. Inside the market, it offers two stories of vendors selling everything from fresh fruit, bread, meat, and wine to crafts and artworks from local and Canadian artisans. It also has a six-story tower with a viewing platform that showcases the city and two adjoining rivers. Outside the market is the Forks Market Plaza, which features fountains, canopies, several open performance spaces, and patios, which overlooks the river. At their food hall, they offer a selection of craft beers and wines. So, if you plan on going to only one place in Winnipeg, I highly recommend checking out Forks Market. Just finished over at Forks Market. Uh, honestly, it's almost just like our Granville Market right outside. Uh, they have that little river area there for people to hang out. And the cool thing is people can actually drink outside. So anyways, uh, we're just gonna be walking around. I'm gonna be checking out a few more uh, places here in this area. And then uh, probably start heading back to the hotel because we have a, a another long drive to another place. All right, another building here is the Human Rights uh, Building. Um, speaks for itself it's a place where Ashley has uh, shares about histories of uh, people dealing with human rights and uh, such like that so I uh, wish I actually was able to go in there I love history as you guys may already know and unfortunately they did close a little bit early by the time we got here and we kind of just spent our time over at Forks Market speaking of which right beside that is they have a park they actually have a skate park and a bike park as well too over here and just down the road that way is actually forks market which is pretty cool pretty nice area uh you know to come visit and you know if you just want to spend a day hanging around just got back to the hotel uh, after going to forks market honestly if we had a little bit more time probably check out more places but unfortunately we're limited in time uh, as we're going to Thunder Bay right in the morning. Welcome to day five. We are currently in Ontario now, just past Canmore at a gas station on the way to Thunder Bay. Didn't have time to film this morning, just kind of drove and started heading. This is kind of more my pace, kind of done with the flatlands for the time being and saw some mountains, saw some trees, saw some wildlife, you know, kind of like just more of a BC weather kind of thing. As we continued down the Trans Canada Highway, we experienced a familiar type of weather change which made it feel like home. It went from cloudy to rainy, back to cloudy, and then suddenly, it was sunny. After a few hours of driving, we decided to take a break at a gas station to stretch our legs and to gas up. Coincidentally, it was also lunchtime and there was a taco truck beside the gas station. I must say, it was very delicious. Really good. 
Once our bellies were full, we got back onto the highway towards our next destination, which was Kakabeka Falls Provincial Park. As we carried down the highway, we finally passed through the last time zone change on this direction of the road trip. And let me tell you, losing an hour every time we crossed parts of Canada really took a toll on me. Glad my dad was there to back me up when I needed rest. After driving for four hours, we finally made it to Kakabeka Falls Provincial Park. Kakabeka Falls is the second highest waterfall in Ontario, measuring at 40 meters high. It's located on the Kaminsky River beside the village of Kakabeka Falls in the municipality of Oliver Pepunge, 30 kilometers west of the city of Thunder Bay. Because of its size and year-round access, it's been dubbed the Niagara of the North. The park also offers two campgrounds with 169 campsites, 90 of which have electricity, guided hikes during the summer, and cross-country trails in the winter. If you're driving to and from Thunder Bay, I highly recommend adding Kakabeka Falls on your list of places to visit. Really happy that we got to pass by Kakabeka Falls. I mean, look at that. It's just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful waterfall. And uh, weather held up for us today. Uh, I'm getting drenched because of all the mist coming from here as the uh, waterfall hits the rocks. But all in all, really happy about this uh, provincial park. If you guys are interested, it's about 550 just for two hours. And uh, you get to you know, check out the whole uh, park itself. Uh, there's also a park here where you can actually camp. It is a provincial park. Uh, I wish I could fly my drone, but unfortunately, since it's a provincial park, you can't fly your drone, but hopefully, I kind of gave you guys a perspective of how it looks like. Anyways, about to hit up uh, Thunder Bay now to go to our hotel. Uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Sudbury uh, in a decent time because we're headed to uh, Niagara Falls tomorrow morning. So just got to the lake shore and one thing is pretty cool most of the rocks here in their lakeshore bed. I don't know if the uh, camera is doing it justice, but most of it is red. Let me just pick this one up. Like right here, it's like red. It's pretty cool. I mean, can't complain about the view as well. I mean, look at that. Look at that beautiful view. That's pretty sick. What do you think of the view, Joe? so beautiful so nice and the water's so clear this is so uh yeah, it is very calming this is lake superior this place is actually just right off the highway kind of just saw it i wanted to check out the place before we start driving more such a nice drive around this area uh it's pretty much summer 
so Mosquito is here. But all in all, very happy, very happy about this trip. After that quick break at the rest stop, it's time to get back on the road towards Sudbury. Seems like BC's weather followed us all the way to Ontario. Uh, it's starting to rain uh, after having such a sunny uh, morning, actually, uh, coming down from Thunder Bay. Now it's raining pretty hard. So um, from what I saw in the weather uh, channel, it's going to be raining uh, the whole day, even at Sudbury. So, uh, But the good news is it's going to be sunny tomorrow at Niagara Falls. But we're still going to get wet. We're actually going to be taking the boat in the actual falls itself. Uh, so yeah, uh, looking forward to that. Uh, my, my sister and my mom actually experienced that last time they went to um, Toronto so me and my dad are gonna be going tomorrow I'm just taking a quick break over here at Chippewa Falls I'm gonna see if we can actually walk there and get to closer to the falls uh, but for now uh, this is how it looks like right off the highway I think right beside the rest stop it's a pretty nice uh, waterfall but anyways we're, me and Julian are gonna see if we can get over to that side of the waterfalls so we can get a little bit closer look. Chippewa Falls is a wide cascade measuring to about 100 meters during high flows. Located along the Trans-Canada Highway, the waterfall is easily accessible and is a popular rest spot for travelers. When the river flows are low, the river is confined in the lower notches and grooves in the bedrock. While less spectacular, this is the best time to get out and explore. The rest area is also the halfway point of the Trans-Canada Highway that runs from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria, British Columbia. After exploring the waterfalls, we continue down the road towards Sudbury. After driving for four hours, we finally arrived at our hotel in Sudbury, where we just relaxed and called it an early night. everybody welcome to day seven I believe today is Friday so day seven of this trip we are currently on route to Niagara Falls first time going there like I mentioned yesterday I've seen videos I've seen tons of pictures as a kid I've always wanted to visit there I was definitely jealous when my sister and my mom went to Toronto and they got to uh, check it out so today I'm gonna live my uh, childhood um, dreams. I'm gonna be taking you guys with me. And yeah, I'm very excited. Just found parking over here at Niagara Falls. About to go to the actual falls itself and uh, get in the boat. Niagara Falls is a group of three waterfalls, the American Falls, the Bridal Veil Falls, and the Horseshoe Falls, which is the largest of the three. The waterfalls are located in the southern end of the Niagara Gorge, spanning the border between the province of Ontario in Canada and the state of New York in the United States. More than 168,000 cubic meters or 6 million cubic feet of water go over the Horseshoe Falls every minute during the peak daytime hours in the summer. It's been a childhood dream of mine to visit Niagara Falls and I'm glad that I'm able to experience riding a boat down the Niagara River with my dad. All right, just purchase our tickets on the way to the boats we go. Ready to go? Yep, yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Thanks, 
Ready to get wet? Yeah, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Woo Red poncho time. side are like walk they, they can really walk yeah they, they start from there they can walk all down there the the left side of the boat where we would pass the american falls it can best be described as the american side of niagara falls which in comparison is a smaller waterfall that lies far to the left of the Horseshoe falls and is located between prospect point and luna island i like the fact that they kind of they explain what each falls are uh that they're explaining what american side what these other falls are and all fun facts and stuff like that uh, right now we're about to hit the Canadian side of the waterfall, so uh, yeah, should should be a lot more wet. Because uh, as you guys can see right there, right ahead of time, the, the people right there in the center are getting soaked. So yeah, if the uh, video is a bit blurry because uh, of all the water, then uh, sorry guys. The white foam in the water is actually uh, limestone. Oh, limestone? Yeah, it's limestone. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just got to the city of Toronto um, actually side note we decided to just stay at Toronto for the next day as well too uh, we were planning to go to Montreal but uh, it's gonna be rushed and we kind of want to enjoy our time when we go to Toronto so it's supposed to rain tomorrow so we're gonna try to get to places as fast as we can today decided to go check out the Toronto Harbor front we're gonna go to uh, Toronto leave Toronto Island so we're walking there right now had to find a different place to go park because of the uh, storage bin on top of our uh, of the RAV4 so uh, yeah now we're just walking and uh, trying to find a find a way to get to the waterfront all right so this is the stadium where the Blue Jays play pretty cool CN Towers right here old 
trains over here at the rec room eats and entertainment it's a small like little area you can actually check out some old rail railway heritage center that's what it is i guess you can check out some old trains <laughs> All right, so this whole area is actually, they changed this rail yard, I guess, into a restaurant called uh, Steam Whistle, just right behind us uh, over at Rogers Center. That's pretty cool. Just got to the waterfront area, uh, trying to find the ferry, but so far a pretty cool spot here. They have like play areas here with a little gazebo so people can actually stay in and st stay active still. Um, Harbor front center and yeah I I'm assuming all this is residence right here that's pretty cool look it's a pirate ship after walking for a good half hour we're finally boarding the water taxi that will be taking us to the Toronto Islands mm -hmm. jump, Betsy, jump. The Toronto Islands are a chain of 15 small islands in Lake Ontario, south of mainland Toronto. The islands are home to the Toronto Island Park, the Billy Bishop Toronto City Airport, several private yacht clubs, a public marina, Central Bill Amusement Park, a year-round residential neighborhood, and several public beaches. In our visit to the island, my sister and I decided to visit the Central Island as it has the most attraction and one of the best views of the city, which I'll be sharing later. Speaking of which, we finally arrived at the Central Island Dock. So we are currently at the amusement part of the island. I'm just gonna flip the camera right now so you guys can see it. Across the bridge, some swan rides over here. Got the boats dock over here. Yeah, this is the amusement part of the Toronto Island. It's pretty sick, man. To be a child here when, when you're little, right? It would have been awesome. I mean, it's pretty much like Playland, but you're in an island log ride right here. Concession stands over here. I guess the car rides and train rides over here. Got some water park area over here. Yeah, we're just gonna keep on walking around. How's the beaver tail? It's pretty good. Yeah. Just kind of tastes like a donut. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to try. Just finished over at the amusement park. Just crossing this bridge to check out the fountain before we start heading back. We're back in downtown Toronto on the way to the Toronto sign. 
right beside the uh, city of Toronto uh, building. Uh, yeah, we were meaning to go there yesterday, but just didn't have enough time. So uh, we're back in the city with my parents, the dogs, and we're gonna go check out the sign right now. Just left uh, the Toronto sign on the way to Young and Dundas Square. I guess this is their version of Times Square over here in Toronto. So let's go check it out. Since we're technically tourists, we might as well act like one and take the sightseeing bus. It's a great way to see the city and learn about its history. Speaking of which, it's time to go. Probably gonna be heading back to my aunt's house, but we'll see how that goes. Decided not to continue uh, going and checking places around. Kind of pretty much did that with the tour. So um, right now we're just going to head to my aunt's uh, uh, place, probably rest for the day and get ready for tomorrow as we embark back to BC. Yeah, we're gonna be having a long drive. Let's just say that because uh, our first stop tomorrow is gonna be Wawa. Uh, Ontario uh, which will take probably about 10 to 11 hours so uh, yeah uh, probably gonna get my good rest today and get ready for tomorrow we're on our way to Wawa Ontario we just left my aunt's house I just want to say thank you to uh, Uncle Said and uh, Auntie Elma for the hospitality for having us over at their place uh, the last couple of days over in uh, Toronto I truly appreciate that guys like I said we're on our way to Wawa Ontario 
it's going to be our first stop uh, on our way back to uh, British Columbia. Pretty excited. I mean, the sun is out right now and we're going to be um, checking out Wawa Lake as well. I uh, didn't get to check that out when we uh, went there the first time. We actually passed by Wawa on the way to Toronto, but we didn't stop too long. Um, we were trying to look for some somewhere to eat over there, but uh, I think most of it wasn't uh, open during that time. So time to keep on driving. I uh, got a lot of hours to uh, go before we get there. We should be arriving there in about eight hours and it's currently eight o'clock. So hopefully we can get there by four or 5 p.m. today. All right guys, so this is the first time I've uh, seen this one. I've seen it in a commercial. Uh, it's the caffeine version of uh, the Coca-Cola. So I'm gonna try it out. See if it tastes any good. That's not bad. Kinda tastes like, honestly kinda tastes like iced tea. It's not bad. That was good. Uh, I even showed him uh, what what I was looking at with the drone shot. So um, yeah, if if that cop is ever watching this video, uh, shout out to you. Thank you so much for uh, just checking up on my family. But all in all, uh, yeah, it was an interesting uh, interaction. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Just wanted to kind of just add that as a uh, kind of funny situation that I was put. Uh, during uh, flying that drone. I can tell you my problems. I can tell you my sins. I can tell you my problems. I'm uncomfortable in my skin. I'm uncomfortable with my ends. I'm uncomfortable with my friends. I'm uncomfortable with my drinking. I'm uncomfortable with my thinking. I'm uncomfortable with my waist. I'm uncomfortable in this space. I'm uncomfortable on good days. I'm uncomfortable on bad days. I'm uncomfortable with my soul. I'm uncomfortable with my heart. I'm uncomfortable with myself. I'm uncomfortable with my heart. I'm uncomfortable with my thoughts. I'm uncomfortable with my feelings. And sadly, I'm uncomfortable with healing pretty big I'll be honest uh, the video isn't doing it justice I'm pretty sure but that moose was pretty big uh, Joe first time seeing your moose yeah it was huge That's it kind of, I don't know what to say <laughs> it's pretty cool finally yeah. seeing one because yeah. I've been wanting to see one um, for a long time yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's actually same here first time seeing a, uh, an actual wild moose in um, in the, in the wild. Dad, how about you? Thumbs up? <laughs> That's it. Alright. Well, we're um, about 20 minutes away from a Wawa right now. And uh, yeah, we should be there in about 20 minutes. <laughs> and we just got to Wawa Lake. Got lucky. I thought it was going to start raining. Um, unfortunately, I can't use my drone to fly here right now. They have the water planes over there. 
so I don't think I can fly my drone here. Um, but yeah, this is Wawa Lake. It's pretty nice. I actually have a little beach area as well too, which is awesome. Glad to, glad that it didn't rain, like I said, and we got to see this really quickly. I think we're just gonna chill here for a little bit and then start heading to uh, the hotel. But before that, we're probably gonna hit up uh, the Wawa Goose. Alright guys, just got to the information center. Oh, unfortunately, they're closed. So I'm just gonna check out the Wawa Goose, which is right there. Here is the Wawa Goose. Famous Wawa Goose. So yeah guys, that is the Wawa Goose just on our way to the hotel and uh, that will be the end of the day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning everybody. It's the next day, day 11 on our way to Winnipeg. It's going to be the probably the second longest drive we're going to be doing uh, in this whole trip. It's about 12 and a half hours. We're already an hour, I'd say an hour in the trip. We just left Wawa. And uh, yeah, we got a good sleep. Um, just driving right now on the highway, uh, hoping I can find a uh, place to get coffee. Because uh, I made a mistake of leaving Wawa without getting uh, coffee over at the Tim Hortons over there. So uh, just hoping we can get grab one uh, just to get the, the caffeine fix. It's gonna be a long drive. Let's get to it. Just got to the Terry Fox lookout. We were actually supposed to do this on the way to Toronto, but we got to Thunder Bay pretty late. So we're going there right now. Pretty sweet lookout. If you guys look here, I mean, you get to see uh, Lake Superior just right there beautiful and then down there is just thunder bay here's the terry fox statue actually just down the road is where he stopped uh his walk uh it actually had a plaque over there didn't get to film it but yeah it's just down the road that way we're just gonna hang out here for a little bit take some pictures and uh probably start heading towards winnipeg as it's gonna take another six hours or so just to get there but all in all i'm very happy that we got to visit the terry fox statue We are currently at Kenora, Ontario, just two hours away from Winnipeg. And uh, yeah, the drive's been awesome. Wish I had a little bit more time. Uh, would have loved to have uh, flown my drone in this area. There's so many lakes in this area. And 
and um, yeah, and that's why I guess they call it uh, Lake of the Woods. Before we head to our hotel, we're actually gonna pass by the center of Canada uh, Park. Probably gonna take some pictures and uh, maybe even fly my drone in that area. But the drive across Ontario is definitely long. Like it is definitely a wide province. It pretty much takes about almost a day just to go across from east to west. Can't wait to actually hit up the hotel and uh, rest for tonight. So as we entered Manitoba, it started downpouring. It was actually raining pretty hard and then it got cloudy and then now it's sunny. So which is awesome because we are at the center of Canada. Let's go check it out. This is pretty cool. Just a sign. Center of Canada. A little wet just because it just rained a bit earlier. Here's another sign. Center of Canada. And this is the official one right here. That's pretty cool. All right, I think we're just gonna take some pictures and then start heading to our hotel. Hi, yo. My boys, hello. Oh, Hi. So cute. Hi, eggs. All of day 12 was pretty much all driving since we plan on driving from Winnipeg to Calgary all in one day. This drive took us about 13 hours in total. Even when we left Winnipeg very early in the morning, we still arrived late in the evening in Calgary. Good morning, everybody. Day 14. Didn't get to film anything yesterday, decided to just call it, you know, like a day off, I guess. And uh, just hung around with family uh, during that time. And uh, you guys can see, got a haircut, everything else. Just, yeah, just relaxed after driving three days straight uh, within like three provinces. Yeah, it kinda, kinda it catches up to you, so we kinda just rested. Uh, right now we're on the road, on the way back to BC. Uh, we're just passing by Banff right now and uh, we're gonna pass by uh, a place I haven't been to yet I believe even my rest of my family has it. It's called Emerald Lake down in uh, BC side of uh, the Glacier uh, Mountains or the Rocky Mountains. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna go check it out right now We're only an hour away. So uh, come join us around this area I was gonna quit actually uh, da, this last one but I uh, found a spot to park around Emerald Lake kind of crazy it's a touristy spot so there's a lot of people but uh yeah I'm my way there right now I have to check it out Emerald Lake is located in the Yoho National Park on the British Columbia side of the Canadian Rockies. With its stunning emerald color, it's one of the most photographed lakes in North America. Just like Lake Louise, it offers abundance of hiking trails and canoeing during the summer. While during the winter, it offers easy access to cross-country skiing and winter activities. Since it's well known, it attracts tons of tourists, which was evident during our visit. Also, the lack of parking space got me a bit frustrated. So, if you plan on visiting Emerald Lake, it's best to get there super early to beat the rush, or you can always stay at the Emerald Lake Lodge, which overlooks the lake. Just finished over at uh, <laughs> Emerald Lake. Just about to head to the, <laughs> the hotel down in uh, Rebel Silk. Uh, probably gonna have lunch soon, but <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of tourists. Parking is bad. <laughs> yeah, parking is bad. There's so many people here, so better to go on a tour bus. Exactly. Or so come here super early. Exactly. I think going here early is a lot better. But anyways, uh, we're on our way back to the RAV4 and uh, head into Rebel Stoke now.
All right, guys, just got to the Revelstoke Railway Museum. I'm gonna go check it out. All right, guys, so <laughs> got there a little too late. Uh, 30 minutes won't be enough, uh, as the person in the front said so. So we'll be just back here, nine o'clock sharp, to go check it out. Anyways, um, we might go check out the town and we'll see how that goes. All right, take two on going to the uh, Revelstoke Railway Museum. Uh, we're here already in the next day, so let's go check it out. The Revelstoke Railway Museum is located in the city of Revelstoke. The museum was built in 1992 and opened its doors to the public in 1993. It showcases the historic construction and operation of the Canadian Pacific Railway in Western Canada's mountain region. It features both indoor and outdoor exhibits of heritage rail cars, engines, antiques, and artifacts. Since I enjoy history, this was a bucket list stop for me, plus who doesn't love trains as a kid? If you are planning on visiting the museum, they recommend that you set aside at least an hour and a half, two hours during your visit. Ghost? The bigger room, the single room. Oh yeah, yeah. this is for this is for the rich rich. Yeah, this is for the, I guess it's like for one person or like a family. That's pretty cool. Kitchen, coach part, right? Awesome. That's awesome. Man, it's so, even back then, it's so luxurious, eh? It's pretty cool. Conductor Jillian. Yeah. Okay. And then move the other ones to the right. This one? All of them. Yeah. And then the other one. That's Set, it. reverse to forward. Yeah. Oh, oh, here we go, Jillian. <laughs> Conductor Jillian, let's go. Okay. We're, uh, we're heading to, I don't know where we're going, but. Oh, here we go. Chugga 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 Whoa! <laughs> do it again, do it again! That's so cool. Oh, there's a bell. Yeah, you can just play around with it. So you pretend that you're doing it. That's so cool. Hey, can I try? Yeah, come. <laughs> Alright, speed up. Oh, there, Jill. I know. The bell? Mm -hmm. How fast are we going? We gotta get to 80. It's speed. Stop. There you go, I'm gonna go fast. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are. What did you do? I just went for a throttle, baby. There you go. Keep it like that. What is this? Oh, it's stop light. Oh, yeah. It's reaching up to 40 miles per hour. Cowboy, baby. You'd be a scary railroad <laughs> driver. I'm Dr. Gary. Let's see where he's going. It's too fast, too furious. We're hitting 50. Hitting 50. Jump. Do the bell. I mean, do the whole ring. Oh, cowboy, baby. Oh, I'm gonna hit something. Oh, no. Oh, the oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> They moved out of the way. Oh, no. <clears throat> Hold your breath. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> that was the fastest one. Yeah. Do the bell again. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, fuel warning! Fuel warning! Oh no! No, bricks. Press the fuel warning. No, we can't. Oh. It, oh. Uh. That's it! After checking out the train yard outside, it's time for us to head on down to Asoyus. Emerald Lake would look nice during the winter. Close your eyes. Get some rest. I'm by your side. Lay your head on my chest. Just got to Kelowna, about to have lunch. Back in the car, about to leave Kelowna for Osoyas. Uh, we're staying at a hotel, motel I believe, hotel motel uh, tonight. So should be just another hour or so until we get to Osoyas, depending on the traffic. It is Saturday today, so we'll see. Could be a, a lot faster to get there. Uh, but all in all, had some good tacos during lunch at Let Taqueria. I don't know exactly what the road that we were on, but yeah, it was delicious. My dad's gonna be driving now. Had a little bit of, little bit of drink. Had a bit of a drink. Had some margaritas. Uh, just about to leave and head to Asoyas. Day 16, last day of the trip, and we're headed home. We're planning on checking out Spotted Lake located northwest of Osoyoos, but it wasn't open for the public. Here's how it looks like from afar. Since Spotted Lake was a fail, we decided that Manning Provincial Park would be the last stop before we head home. Got to Manning Park. We're at Lightning Lake. First time being here. Man, it's a really nice spot. Probably gonna go here. Dad just mentioned it. Planning to maybe go here again uh, to go camping and probably stay for like a couple of days or so. But all in all, looks pretty sick. Let's go check out the lake. Too bad I can't fly my drone. Up here, we're we're. This is my drone shot. Canada, USA border. What ship, else? Ship Mountain, USA. <laughs> Wind, Joe. <laughs> the parks, USA. Mount Frosty. Mount Sum. USA. Mox. Mox Peak. Big sign. Skyline Ridge. Let's go. Let's go. Red lift. And that's all, folks. Just went to the Cascade Lookout over here in Manning Park. Uh, 
I really wish I could have fly my drone, but um, I guess you guys will just have to enjoy the makeshift drone shot with my GoPro. So, but anyways, now we're on our way back down now, on our way home. I think that's pretty much it for this video. So if you guys liked the video um, and you guys enjoyed the whole series, or if you haven't watched the series, go check it out. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Also, hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss any future videos. Until next time, guys, like always, stay awesome. Good morning, guys. Oh my God. Mom, shut up. All right, quiet on the set. All right, quiet on the set. <laughs> hey, 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 stop, stop, stop. Exit, stop, stop. Exit. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Welcome to episode two of the uh, Crosscut. Oh, I did it again, did it. Go, I said! <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the Cross Canada... Sleeping on the wheel. <laughs> Sleeping on the wheel! <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's sunny now. What the hey? Come here, my Duncan. Exit, your dad's weird. Son, <laughs> 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 